Hey, what's going on today, guys? My name's Trey. Welcome back to the channel. And today, I've got a really special episode for you guys. Today, we're going to be focusing on what I ate in a day at Disney World. And we are going to be focusing on vegan options. So if vegan options aren't your thing, please feel free to watch anyways, because the food is bomb regardless. So quick disclaimer before we get into the video, even though I live in Hawaii, I was actually born and raised in Florida. So I've been to Disney World hundreds of times. And I can remember when Disney World literally had no vegan options. You know, they might have had popcorn by mistake, but now there are over 500 different vegan options at the Walt Disney World Resort. Super exciting time. I'm really excited to share this episode with you guys. So stay tuned and let's get into it. So we decided to start our day at Disney's Animal Kingdom, one of our favorite theme parks. And we decided to do the Kilimanjaro Safari first, which is a really cool expedition that takes you throughout a makeshift African savanna, and you see all different types of animals and trees and shrubbery and plant life. It's a really cool opportunity to see some things that you might never get to see in your life here in the state of Florida. And we love it so much. And after that, we decided to head over to Satuli Canteen. Satuli Canteen is an avatar themed restaurant based in the fictional universe that is Pandora. Now, because we are still in a pandemic, Disney is actually forcing all of its attendees to order via the Disney World app, which is actually pretty easy and it only took a few minutes for us to receive our food. But upon entering the restaurant itself to pick up your food, you're gonna be met with some really immersive, amazing theming. Now, the primary reason why we're here is to order this amazing dish right here called the Chili Spice Crispy Tofu Bowl. Right out the gate, this doesn't even look like something you'd get at Disney, but as you can see, it is absolutely exquisite looking dish. You can order it with rice or you can order it with the potatoes. I personally thought that the potatoes were a nice touch, but every single aspect of this dish was so tasty and exquisite and really didn't seem like something you'd find at Disney, but I was pretty impressed and this was a really great start to our tour around Disney World. Another great snack that we'd recommend is definitely the Dole Whip. Now, Animal Kingdom is special and different than Magic Kingdom because you can actually order your Dole Whip with coconut rum. And I also think you could do it at Epcot as well, but we like doing it at Animal Kingdom because it's one of the hottest theme parks at the Walt Disney World Resort. And it tastes really good. Well, guys, I made a huge party foul. This is originally where we were supposed to go to Magic Kingdom and eat food, which we did, but I accidentally deleted the footage. So instead, I'm gonna be inserting these pictures so you guys can get an idea of what we ate. And we headed over to Hollywood Studios, which I promise I didn't actually delete the footage this time. And the very first place we decided to head was over to Star Wars Land, which this was actually our first time going to this Star Wars Land. We decided to hit up Docking Bay 7, which is a really great restaurant. And they provide the Felucian, Kefta, and Hummus Garden Spread, which features hummus, tomatoes, mixed vegetables, pita, and some really amazing, I think they are Beyond Meatballs. Guys, wow, I, I can't say this enough. Yes, this is Disney World. This isn't like fine dining by any means, but man, Disney is crushing it when it comes to the food. This was so tasty, it was so good. After destroying the empire in Star Wars land, we decided to head over to Baseline Tap House, which is basically a small version of a brewery, but they provide a really great pretzel, which is accidentally vegan. And of course we had to get a beer. 50's Primetime Cafe is another great option here at Hollywood Studios and a restaurant that has been on my radar for a few years now. It's a really immersive restaurant that transports you back to the 1950s and 1960s, features all different types of vintage televisions and old school furniture and really like gives you that retro feel. It's got the checkerboard flooring and old school furniture. It's a really great place to bring your family. It's super immersive, super fun. The service is outstanding. Everything is so nice about this place. Yes, they do feature vegan food options for lunch and dinner. However, since we had been eating a lot today, we decided to go with something a little bit sweeter. We went with the traditional warm apple crisp, which features a really nice oat topping. Guys, this is such a solid apple crisp. This is a must eat option when you come here to the Walt Disney World Resort. To wrap up our vegan food tour of the Walt Disney World Resort, we decided to head over to Epcot, which is arguably my favorite theme park for a few reasons. One, I love technology. Um, that's what I do in my career, but I also love food and I love science. And we it just so happens that we were here during the Food and Wine Festival and they offer so many different foods like this mac and cheese, which was actually pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of spice, 
this festival in particular really did a great job of featuring spicier food so if that's what you're into this is definitely going to be a great experience and as you can see here we ordered the crispy buffalo sprouts which really something that you wouldn't think you would find at the walt disney world resort but it does a great job of mimicking buffalo wings and the sauce was amazing i love blue cheese personally um, i do love buffalo sauce as well such a great dish and the next thing we got was the Madras red curry, which was also a spice for dish. Really, really nice stuff. And right next door to that at the refreshment outpost, we decided to order the spicy githeri. And one great thing about this dish is it's actually pretty refreshing. The vegetables on top help to simmer down the spiciness of the githeri itself. And after that, we met up with Melissa and Corey from Vegan Disney World and we went to this really great restaurant to eat some hummus fries. And of course we had to get the world famous pomegranate chili crusted cauliflower. So good, so bomb. Melissa, Corey, love you guys. Thank you for the recommendation. And of course we continue our journey around uh, Epcot and we decided to get this awesome banana bread, which is pretty good. And one of the big dishes that we were excited to try was this impossible three bean chili. It had great flavor. And of course, we had to get the famous Impossible Slider. Well, guys, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us on our vegan food tour of the Walt Disney World Resort here in Florida. Really got a chance to eat some amazing food. This video could have easily been over an hour if I had taken the time to eat the 500 plus vegan options. But as I mentioned earlier, this is a really, really exciting time for Disney in terms of food. There's they're taking so many risks, you know, they're making it readily available for vegans and anybody that is a flexitarian or a vegetarian, they're, they're making these options readily available. And I think it's so awesome to see. I think, you know, a lot of these theme parks and entertainment companies need to be taking these risks just because it's inclusive, you know, like people deserve to have fun and be able to eat what they want. And I'm excited to continue seeing Disney making these strides in terms of their menu offerings. So, also wanted to give a huge shout out to Melissa from Vegan Disney World. Oh my gosh, like guys, talk about one of the hardest working individuals in the community worldwide. She does a great job of providing information and news regarding vegan options and she taste tests every single option in the parks, the resorts, the water parks, everywhere. She does a great job. She's based out of the Orlando area. So I'm gonna post a link to all of her pages in the description below, so please, Feel free to show her some love. She's an amazing, beautiful human being. Her husband, Corey, is awesome as well. Their little son, Finn, is one of the coolest little guys I've ever met. So with that being said, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for all the continued love and support. And we'll see you next time.